I'm Maxine. I work at Slash. My pronouns are she, her, and um, I help uh, run the room space, which is the small gallery, which is part of the larger Slash uh, exhibition space, but it's specifically dedicated to um, a more emerging artists, local artists, and it's all based on um, open call uh, proposals that are selected by guest juries. And so this exhibition is unique in that it's a joint project between Room in San Francisco and Mailing um, Cup 20 in Berlin. And we were seeking video work to be exhibited in both spaces. Um, and so Judith came up with this proposal and we're showing some of her uh, some tour videos of past parts of her larger project, which she mentioned, which is Zipudi da Kotelep, which she's been working on since 2018. And this is sort of the newest neighborhood that is part of this larger VR collaborative project that you have all, as audience members, um, been invited to participate in through drawings and um, photos that you can send to Judith directly, and it'll continue to grow over the next few weeks while her exhibition is up. Um, so if you are in San Francisco or if you happen to be in Berlin, we do encourage you to also come visit um, the installations in, in the two exhibition spaces. But this is the growing collaborative aspect of this project um, that, that Judith will give us a tour of. So I kind of want to leave it at that so we can have a lot of time to look at the space unless you, you, you want me to add anything else. Thank you so much for this, Maxine. I also see Magda arrived and I would like, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask if uh, she would uh, like to say a few words. If uh, you can unmute yourself, sorry, yeah. Yeah, um, I can, um, but I will not know if I'm repeating what Maxine I bet already said. But um, I would be curious. I can to... say how it has been so far he yeah. here and in I would, Berlin. Maxine, just really quickly, I would also love to hear you talk a little bit about your space, give a little bit more background if you have, because I didn't talk much about that. I can do that. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So. Uh, the, the Meringplatz 20 is a gallery uh, that is a gallery on Tuesdays for two hours and otherwise is my bedroom. And um, I live in this quite architecturally unique social housing space that was built in the 1968 and, um, and it's still social housing. And um, um, so having a kind of an attempt on VR social housing in an actual physical social housing that has been that now for decades um, has been really interesting. And um, on Sunday, I am about to host a couple of people who live in the same building and found it by accident. So I'm curious what they will say. Um, yeah, and otherwise it's a, um, the motivation kind of to have a bedroom gallery is this push against the art as we know it, that is very separate um, and kind of sterile sometimes and keeps uh, a distance. Um, so having people sit on my bed and look at Judith's videos or um, we got um, a loan of VR goggles and have them sit on the carpet and, and navigate in VR goggles um, has been really um, fun and people have a lot of thoughts about how to be ancestors in digital spaces um, and outside of them. Um, so thank you, you did for bringing it. Thank you so much for them. hosting this uh, very intimate private space. And uh, with this, I would like to invite you to to synchronize ourselves I um, with a token that is also embedded in this space. This uh, entrance space is uh, a mix of the, the little island I am on. And you can see this uh, shiny blob that is a thing. It's a shelter uh, tent that I like to fly and work with the wind to see how things can take shape. And this book that you can see with, uh, together with my old feet is, uh, mm. is the book 
called Oracular Transmissions by Ethel Adnan and Lynn Mary Kirby. Uh, amazing artists that I have admired and uh, deeply felt called to their practices, especially since it is so beautifully uh, speaks about and to uh, friendship and love. And uh, with this, I would, I would like to, uh, I sent a copy of the book to Magda and Maxine has a, a copy of the book as well. And I'm, I'm happy to talk about the book uh, in details later, but I would like to see if we could just play with, open the book randomly. And since we are probably indoors and we don't have the wind to work with that, um, Otherwise, I would I would uh, use often to just open the book and see where the wind wants to take me in this oracular. Uh, I would, if you feel comfortable, Maxine and Magda, like you could like just blow on the pages a little bit, and then we can see where it opens. And uh, if you feel comfortable sharing your camera, um, that I will do now. Um, not sure if you can see me all. But so uh, this is the book I'm talking about that we should hold, uh, all the three of us should hold in the hands. It's very soft on the outside. And I thought that maybe with this, we could just like open it up and <clears throat> use our breath as a wind and see where it opens up. And I would read this uh, message, the stone trembles. Would you, uh, would you like to join me in this, Maxine and Magda? Um, mine reads, which is ultimately the existence of the divine. The open-ended existence of the divine. Thank you. I have more words. Mine says, ritual. They also said it was because of the fumes inside the caves, as the fumes inside of the caves were also how she got dragged well. Thank you so much. Um, it, uh, this book has a lot of ideas that I love to embed in, in these spaces and thinking about like how can we use this virtual to, to actually really connect together. And so I would like to start this uh, guided tour, which is a, a very optional guidance. If you don't want to follow me, that's totally fine. Go on your own. And um, I will just say a few uh, words about, for example, this uh, 3D house here, which can be the entrance to the Sifku de la Cotella marrying plots and room together, is uh, one of the first drawings that I, uh, that I made when I uh, first uh, started thinking about what a social housing neighborhood could mean in cyberspace. And if you, might, if you can uh, follow me out from here, Outside is, uh, is a space that I built with uh, images that uh, the two localities shared with me, uh, photos from Marine Platz and Room. And uh, we included a notebook at, two, at the two places and visitors could come and draw. And so I altered their drawings and uh, here is one that says, learn, participate, become Earth. And then you can slide down to Marta's bed in the, I assume, initial phase of her moving in to this neighborhood. The social housing neighborhood or the concept of that uh, for me, and you can also see my avatar is the window itself uh, from my mother's kitchen where I grew up in Sombathe, in a small town in Hungary. And the idea of the social housing neighborhood uh, would like to hold space for a lot of different projects and diversity. And I will move into the center, which is uh, connecting uh, the connecting room 
and surroundings of uh, Slash Gallery. And on the other side, here is uh, Magdalena's window. The windows, I think, are uh, obviously uh, very beautiful metaphors for a lot of things, how, how we think about inside and outside. And uh, this is kind of the center of the space that uh, I populated with these uh, drawings that were uh, made by uh, the physical installation of, of the Sifku de la Cotelab. You can see photos from uh, Magda's flat and in, inside of her space. And that brought up a lot of questions around publicity and or like public space and private space. Uh, here is another drawing of the elevator with this number eight. This is the elevator of my mother's space in Sombathe. And usually I, uh, I include a lot of text in my drawings that are partially in Hungarian, partially in English, and most likely is very inaccessible for anyone else besides me. <laughs> but uh, they are often these drawings that, uh, that are my drawings are uh, blueprints of conversations with uh, faraway beloved ones as I have moved around in many different, uh, into many different cultures and countries. And this is also the essence of why I started to uh, think about how can we connect through these digital realms. And so uh, in this center, I would like to read a little bit from uh, Wendy, uh, Wendy uh, Hugh Kong Chun's new book. It's called Discriminating Data. And I am still digesting and uh, like trying to understand a lot from, and I still have to finish the book, but uh, there are a, a lot of amazing ideas of her thinking about how deeply embedded is uh, racism or discrimination into these systems and how can we uh, disrupt the algorithms to to get away from from these uh, uh, homogeneity of these spaces how uh, like she talks a lot about echo chambers and that's something I'm very interested in how can we nourish or, or uh, facilitate a space in, in the virtual that is more naturally or more organic. And it is not just like the same ideas that we have, that we are repeating. This is actually a part where I would, before this, I would be interested from Magda and her code of conduct. Um, we partially mentioned this at the beginning of, of our uh, thinking. She asked me what were my initial ideas, uh, how do I invite folks into this space, and who do I invite into these spaces. And uh, I always wanted to keep it as open as possible. But of course, there is always the, the question, how do you make it meaningful and how do you invite someone that they can fully, truly participate? And this is why I eventually uh, started working with other artists in the VR art camp that is also the part of the Sivku de la Cota Lab. So there uh, they can create their own spaces in a, uh, and they have more time and resources to do that rather than have a pencil and just like uh, make a gestural drawing that we can embed. On the other hand, I also really, I was really fascinated by these gestures that, that visitors shared with us. So many, it's just so interesting to see what, uh, what people would respond to a question, uh, what would you like to see it? in uh, in a digital neighborhood that uh, would make you a good ancestor. 
is Magda still can can Magda still hear us? I was looking for her. <laughs> yes, yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Um, it's just my I uh, my visuals go on and off, but okay. I hear everything. Okay. <laughs> so I I will read this like a uh, short part from the book, and I would like to ask mm -hmm. ask you to respond to how uh, like how is your work with your gallery that like how how do you nourish this diversity or how does how is it in your case and so mm -hmm. uh wendy writes net community calls on us to engage neighbors and relationships in all their rich ambivalence perversely the logic of social networks spreads the name neighbor everywhere in order to empower it conceptually neighbors are not innocuous the term neighbor literally recalls bores they are nosy and noisy. They provoke hostility, resentment, and ambivalence. They intrude even and especially when they are inert. They offer, however, a way to reside in difference and to engage relations that go beyond homophily, not just heterophily, but also ambivalence and neutrality. As literally critic Kenneth Reinhardt, drawing from Hannah Arendt, and Jack Lacan has declared neighbors who are neither friends nor enemies are the space that enable the public and private to emerge. If the political hinges on distinguishing between the friend and the enemy, the neighbor supplements and does make inad inadequate the political theology of the sovereign. The logic of the neighbor is not that of totality, but rather infinity. In the feminine set of the neighbor, there is no sovereign exception, but instead an infinite process of nothing. Everyone is equally non-sovereign. And then she says, spaces make, make us all topological neighbors. They touch everything and their seeming emptiness grounds democracy. Indeed, at the heart of democracy uh, lies an empty space, because public space does not rightfully belong to anyone, because this space cannot be reduced to the dominant opinion that may emerge from it. It guarantees democracy. Power becomes and remains democratic when it proves to belong to no one. Most strongly, Freedom is space. And uh, and with this quote, I would be happy to open the conversation for everyone, how we think about public and private, and how do we think about neighborhoods, if, uh, if you feel sharing your thoughts. Uh, so maybe, Magda, mm -hmm. how does it work in your bedroom? <laughs> uh, <laughs> on the days off or on? Um, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I That last sentence about space being freedom, I think this is, um, this, this rings so true. And um, it, it makes me think a lot about the process of, processes by which things become public. And because, right, we have public spaces in cities or public spaces that are claimed that they are public, yet they're heavily policed. And we all know they're not for everybody. And um, we all know how um, houseless people try to use public spaces in every city, but we all have seen the 10 cities in the Bay Area, I think and how those people get policed by using public space for using public spaces. Um, and then when a private space, like a bedroom, becomes a public space, um, for me, there is a huge power in that. And there is kind of a layers of power. There is me having enough space so I can open mine occasionally. And I understand that not everybody has that. Um, and 
I they I feel strongly about kind of the um, the shift that happens. And I think it can be really emancipatory um, in a way that we can say, no, we can have a gallery everywhere. We are not necessarily tied by having to have white walls or empty space to um, emphasize the significance of a piece or a presented thought. But I think it also comes with certain responsibility because if we start claiming our space as a public space, and this is what I feel, then the choice of what I will show kind of becomes not only mine and um, is political in different ways, which is the reason why I like doing what I like. But the part about the neighborhood, maybe this I'll close on. Um, um, I really do like the notion. And I think, especially if we understand that being neighbors just requires a huge investment of time. Mm -hmm. I just finished this book um, called We Are Nature Defending Itself, which is about the autonomous zone um, in France. Uh, called ZAD, Zone to Defend. And there people became neighbors with local people and also with the countryside and with the trees and uh, each other and all the animals living there. And it took a long time. And I think there is something that we can't skip without time. Mm -hmm. And so becoming neighbors is a certain commitment of time to me. And I do like this kind of the emphasis on diversity and how that brings the diverse perspectives and I think there is kind of nothing more thrilling than coming together with people and figuring out that even though we can have diverse perspectives there might be kind of shared projects and that's the idea of anarchism right mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. look for shared projects and through that like establish commons and become a community and uh, seeing that and like the sparks of it in a VR space is really interesting to me. I thank you so much for saying saying this. Uh, there is a lot that uh, first of all taking time or to slow down to like make neighbors, for example, with trees. Now I have uh, the privilege to to experience that for for a year and. Uh, and also just to understand like the the beauty of of these relationships and and holding space for each other in a community and how, how much can, like how, how can we value this right and and with all these virtual spaces i i create i aim to to have a an extension of of that in these spaces and to have the drawings from others or to have your ideas said in these spaces, uh, but I think makes it more alive. I would be interested in uh, slash gallery and room because I, I think it's first of all, just so beautiful that you, you call uh, the space for the emerging artists room. And I'm curious to hear how um, so the different approaches of having this private space open up and make it public and um, in in Slash's uh, case, you do have the white walls, but I also think you use it and utilize them in a very community, communal uh, centered approach. And uh, I would love to hear a bit about how you nurture your community around your gallery space. If anyone else from the team wants to jump in, feel free to do so at any point. Um, yeah, this was something that early on we realized was important to us to bring in um, alongside perhaps more established artists that are international, have uh, a space for local artists to be able to um, create often more site-specific projects and work with the team closely to sort of develop those. And 
we wanted to have an open call based approach to this um, to keep it open to people that we may or may not have known about uh, otherwise and also to work with other creative voices in the community so as guest jurors who help us select those projects so again bringing in a variety of voices both uh, in sort of curating the exhibitions or selecting the work and also the artists themselves making the work um, <clears throat> and so this was an exciting sort of development because we were bridging the distance between room in San Francisco and mailing sets and they're very different gallery mo or exhibition models and to see how this project would exist in each space has been or it's been really exciting to observe um so I don't know if that's answering your question directly mm -hmm. Um, I was curious, well, I don't know, maybe if anybody else wants from the team wants to jump in before I ha have a kind of a question for you, you did. There's anything else. The hardship of Mozilla has that you don't see if anyone unmutes oh, themselves and if they want to say something or just... Uh, well, I, I guess, I don't know also if Magda, if you want to add anything else. But, but I guess one thing I should add before is that this has also been a particularly exciting project because it um, is bringing in, it has a participatory component. So visitors to each space, like you already mentioned, and like everybody sees in the space now, can contribute a drawing to the space. So it's, it's or it contribute, can contribute a drawing to a space that is essentially being created as a third almost Space that connects Berlin, San Francisco, and anyone else who wants to contribute. So that's been really, I'm so, it's so beautiful to be in here and see all these drawings and see it changing over time. And but, be, be here together, right? Like that, that folks from San Francisco and Berlin and, and me in the distance island can, can hang. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess going back to your neighbor question, um, I'm curious to, to hear about your experience working, and I know we have to end sort of soon, but working on um, a virtual space that is a neighborhood when neighborhoods I think are so, or at least the way, you know, one understanding of them are so marked by kind of proximity to people mm -hmm. and that really a neighborhood connecting somehow the sound uh stopped for me i don't know if others can you can you still hear me or i can't hear maxine anymore um can you hear me? Oh dear, this, I reload my page. No. Oh, okay, now it's back. Okay, now it's back. Sorry, uh, all, all of this, <laughs> this is like the base of how, how to make friends when you can't uh, even answer a question. So yeah, I really appreciate your question. And this is something that I'm not sure if I have a straightforward answer to, but I have uh, been struggling with how, how to bring this diversity and how to make proximity. And, uh, and that's when I try to invite these different, different people in different ways at, at events before the pandemic and after uh, social distancing I started to uh, work with artists in the in the VR art camp and it is very hard to for example connect different time zones that's just you know so many uh, practical hardships of schedules and stuff and the other part to the more important part to it was I always was uh, 
hoping to somehow, somewhere, uh, bring my Hungarian background together with my newly uh, established Bay Area connections and, and bring these people together. And it was uh, like, a, there was, it's, as Magda said, it takes time. And so spend time in these spaces is very heavy, right? And it's just so different than the natural being together. So conversations can evolve and I, I witnessed a few sparks of that. But uh, if you think from the efficient aspect, like how much can it happen? It's just very limited. And it is a great question. How do I invite or how, like, first of all, if I invite everyone, that's already an exclusive thing, right? So I would love to create a decentralized space that grows organically and it still hasn't fully happened. Like some seeds are there when artists take uh, take out their, their authorship and grow things further, invite their circles. And, but I, I am interested, how can we break uh, my patterns or, you know, just like to, to bring the diversity of the patterns. And another thing that's very interesting for me is the idea of the public and private, right? And and in these digital spaces or like thinking about your digital identity should be so different than, than uh, your regular identity. And this is something I would love to hear from, from you all too, like how you navigate a space where whatever you share is gonna be living in, you know, on the World Wide Web forever, mostly, or in most cases, and how do you uh, differentiate between privacy and and uh, how you think about these spaces? As, as, as in a public space, you know, like if you have a conversation, maybe not everyone will hear and it won't be recorded and, and live there forever. And in these spaces, it is all very loud you write a tweet, it's going to be there and uh, so forth. Um, is there one thing that you would like to leave to your granddaughter, biological or not, in the digital space? Is this question for me, Magda? Yes. <laughs> First of all, my granddaughters are, I like to think about children that, um, maybe like, like, I don't know how to say it in a good way, but like in a shared sense that, you know, my grandchildren are your grandchildren and uh, we are. Uh, something I would like to leave for them uh, is, is the, the feeling that I was so privileged to, to get from my grandparents and parents, uh, the feeling of of this unconditional love and safety. And that's pretty much what I'm trying to recreate in these virtual spaces. Is this an answer for your question? <laughs> that's beautiful. Very much so. I don't think instinctually feels it. I think, I'm not sure if you would agree with me, Martin, but for me, the ver I, and this kind of ties back to your initial question, you know, about like how do I distinguish or how do people here distinguish between their digital identities or presences versus, you know, in the real or quote unquote, you know, physical world. And I think the digital world still feels so very, for me, frightening at times. I don't fully understand, you know, where what ends up and who will, you know, where the data that you leave behind goes. So I think thinking about trying to create a safe, creative um, neighborhood or space for the grandchildren or the, you know, the children that will proceed, uh, follow us is, is a real endeavor. Uh -huh. Because it doesn't feel instinctively this way at all. To me, at least. For sure. 
you know. But I think being here, like spending time, I, I it, it feels very different from other digital spaces that I'm, I've moved in, you know, especially in these last two years. So. Thank you for saying this. The, the endeavor is surely also something that, okay, you can create the surface, right? Or you can create things that exist in your head, but the question is like, are they really becoming what you what you aimed or is it just is it still a, a trap that's that's always a question for me and i i hope not to